For this IEEE Spectrum hands-on feature, I will be using magnetic levitation to float a mirror ball in midair. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, baby! <laughs> yeah. I got the idea for this project from a circuit that my 11-year-old son and I built for his school science fair. We used Legos to make the framework. Hull effect sensors mounted at the top and the bottom of the electromagnet monitor their position of the rare earth magnet floating below and send an error signal to a pulse width modulating microchip, which then switches the power on and off very rapidly to try to keep the rare earth magnet positioned in a sweet spot. It's about an inch below the electromagnet but it's only a few millimeters in height, so it's tricky to find, and it's not stable. So while I can get the permanent magnet to balance within the field, like this, I have to keep a finger on the side of it. And even then you can see the oscillations building up. After trying out several variations of the circuit and finding none that really worked very well, I obtained a kit from Zeltom that is uh, supposed to be able to suspend about 25 grams of weight underneath a single Hull sensor equipped coil. After some initial calibration, I finally was able to get a single magnet to float pretty stably underneath the coil. And with further calibration, the system was able to suspend quite a bit of weight, which gave me hope that my mirror ball would actually be able to float in midair. For the mirror ball, I just used a Christmas ornament, which is a styrofoam ball with mirror tiles glued onto it. I drilled out the center and placed three neodymium rare earth magnets inside. The beam arm that came with the magnetic levitation kit from Zeltom wasn't quite long enough to provide enough clearance for the mirror ball, so I had to fabricate my own arm from some steel and then assemble the circuitry in an outlet box with a switch I used some leftover sheet metal I had lying around to make a temporary enclosure for the gadget and switched it on. In the moment of truth, it turned out to be very easy to find the sweet spot and get the mirror ball hanging and even rotating gently. So I used a remote control to switch the light through various colors and transition modes. A couple weeks later, I received in the mail pieces for a 3D printed enclosure that I'd use for this gadget. I designed it using software from AutoCAD called 123D Design and ordered it from Shapeways, an outfit in Brooklyn. The enclosure had a hole for a gooseneck uh, to come out uh, and for a power cable. The gooseneck would hold the lamp. It had a slit for the beam arm to go through. Uh, the neck then would fit around the beam arm. It also had a slit for wires to go through. And then the head went on top. Once it was all put together, I switched it on and put the levitating disco ball through its paces. But of course, the real fun began when I turned out the lights. Oh, groovy, baby. Yeah. 